Hello, welcome to this discussion on making materials using LightWave. We're taking a slightly different approach in this video tutorial. Instead of working on a project with specific models, we're going to start simply by looking at all the parameters and values involved in materials, and we're going to talk about how they relate to material reality. In the first section, we're going to cover material basics, and that means we're going to look over the, the surface editor here and look at all the different parameters in the surface editor, and we're going to try to find a way to relate them to reality so we can understand what each of these things really means when it comes to realistic materials. And this is crucial in order to create materials that stand up properly under different lighting conditions. Now understand that one of the greatest problems CG artists and especially lighting and shading artists face is the problem of creating materials that work correctly under all lighting conditions. It's quite easy to create a material that looks fine under a single lighting condition but if that material is then put under different lighting conditions and looks wrong, we call that an invalid material. And if a material is invalid, in other words, if it doesn't look right under both, for example, daylight and moonlight, then there's a fundamental error in the creation of that material. We're going to talk about the prime culprit in creating invalid materials, and that's a concept called decoupling. And decoupling occurs when you have various material parameters that belong together that are separated so that you can adjust them separately. And that's usually where we run into trouble if we don't know exactly what we're doing. We're also going to spend a little bit of time talking about the concept of energy conservation. Energy conservation is kind of the opposite of decoupling. It's a concept whereby we create materials by keeping in our heads how much light there is hitting a material and then how much light is reflecting from that material. And the basis of the concept is that there should not be more light reflecting off of something than is arriving at it. That's physically impossible. And we run into a lot of problems by ignoring energy conservation. Now that's not to say that we always have to calculate our energy so that light in matches light out perfectly, but we should keep it in mind as a rule of thumb if we're trying to create uh, valid materials. After we've gone over our material basics and have attempted to gain an understanding of all these parameters and, and the many more that exist in LightWave, we're going to have a second section where we're going to actually create materials from photographic reference. So we're going to make some common materials like chrome, gold, brass, glass, we'll probably do like window glass and then perhaps a vase or a wine glass or something. We're going to look at creating a uh, good looking plastic shader. We're going to look at doing human skin, including subsurface scattering. And we're going to look at other materials like wood and stone, and common materials you might find around your house or in your environment. Following our section on creating good looking materials, we're going to take a little bit more advanced look at materials. And in this case, we're going to pop into the node editor and we're going to discover some of the power that exists inside this innocuous little button on our surface editor. Uh, it's actually incredibly powerful. But before we begin, I want you to keep this one concept in mind. Creating great materials is a lot easier than you think, provided you have a decent understanding of how real materials work, how real lights work, and what each one of the parameters in your lighting and shading tools is intended to do.